Hey, fun fans. To get you pumped for infinite recharge, our friends at West Coast Products have provided a giveaway of a Spartan number 25 or number 35 chain tensioner. To enter, be a YouTube subscriber and let us know in the comments your top prediction for infinite recharge. You can enter in any video that has this intro and the winner will be announced in the fun discord on Saturday, January 4th. So make sure you comment below. First Updates Now videos are brought to you by Stryker. Discover why so many FIRST alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers, internships, and co-ops. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to learn more. Let's jump right into our judging of ranking 71 through 16. Don't forget that these places will be randomly shown on screen and we'll have a couple of comments mentioned about them. Our top 15 teams will be in order and have a bit more mentioned on air. Cawthorn, why don't you start us off with Team 442? Yeah, thanks, Nick. So, Team 442, uh, called, team named the Crockpots. Uh, they're from FRC t Team 3324. Um, they have a really great submission. This is a fun submission. This was a fun robot to look at, the instant bot. Um, I always really enjoy when we have small robots and kind of uh, unique, uh, the, the octagonal drivetrain. I really enjoy that. I think it's very beneficial for moving through defense and cycling and running through things. And I really enjoyed uh, taking a look at like the simple, well-executed arm design. Um, they do have, you know, uh, so they ended up with rank 45. So they're ranked number 45. So they had um, you know, good, good amounts of detail. They used some COTS products in some really good ways. You can see uh, one of the West Coast products gearboxes on their arm and they just had a really like clean well done submission so congratulations to team uh crock pots rank 45 yeah that's a it's a really good looking robot it looks really small and simple now let's move on to team 461 troy what did you think of them muted 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 no. Hey. Okay. <laughs> okay. 461 ended up at rank 41, also from FRC 3224, though composed of different team members. We've got Aaron, Jonathan, and Raisa, uh, team named Metro Mechanical for the Catathon. And this robot, it was kind of interesting because, like, there are some strategic decisions I didn't really get. They've got, like, a big cutout kind of in the hole underneath the robot. And then they have these kind of underside intake wheels, which were pretty neat to see. Uh, there's a lot of like little neat bits of sheet metal going on here. So there's some like kind of cool folded gussets and stuff. But other parts of the robot weren't quite as detailed as I was kind of looking for. Uh, there's some kind of like chain guards. And then I think it was the battery I had an issue with. It seems like it would be very difficult to remove because the elevator supports or the arm mass supports kind of get in the way of actually taking that out. So yeah, that was pretty neat to see. Interesting. I mean, you don't need to take, you can just use the same battery throughout the entire season. No big yeah, you deal. Just, you just charge it real, real fast. It's fine. It's fine. You just, you just exactly. push the robot, push the robot really, really fast and it'll recharge the battery for you. I've, we've tested that. <laughs> <laughs> we have some late nights. All right. Uh, let's move on to team 494, Brian. All right. So team 494 uh, versus is the team name. They ranked 25, and it was a one-person team from FRC 2046, which is pretty impressive. Um, I really like the overall design of the robot. It reminded me a lot of 118 from 2014, which was obviously a great robot, and perhaps it took some inspiration from there. But I thought their lever arm was pretty huge on that shooter, and any hit or crazy thing during a match would just break it, so a few points off for that. But they had some really well-structured uh, gussets and different cool mechanisms, like you can see in that render there. They used a box tube to connect the two sides on the shooter, which I thought was really creative, and I gave them a lot of points for that. And overall, I think that it had a pretty good chance of uh, being a good shooter, but the intake was a little narrow and could have uh, used a maybe over bumper intake or something like that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, good-looking robot, but, you know, improvements always... Uh... There's always room for that. Let's go ahead and move on to our next team, which is Team 449. Yeah, so Team 449, good enough, which I like that team name. I feel that. Um, they end up with rank uh, 39. Um, but this was a really good robot. This was, a, again, this is one of these smaller, shorter robots that I really enjoy seeing. They have a good, a good swerve drive. 
um, that they incorporated well, and they have a really big gear turret that was really cool. It's it's a little bit hard to see on the inside of the render, but um, they have a big old turret with just a massive gear. Might have been 3D printed. Weren't entirely sure how they're planning on making that, but it was really cool. Um, they also had intake on both sides of the robots. So they could ferry ro uh, pucks pretty quickly, but um, they did have some issues. I think they uh, may have looked at the height wrong for the puck or got something. Their intake is actually way too short to actually work. But overall, it's got some really cool concepts. I really enjoyed just kind of the, the aesthetic behind the robot and what they ended up with. So congratulations, team. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I can really I can really relate to that name as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on to team three ninety seven. So we've got team three ninety seven here, ranked number forty three. So pretty close again. Uh, team Steam Robotics FRC fifty one ninety nine. Uh, this robot was kind of interesting because there were like some really neat like kind of big sheet metal assemblies that I really enjoyed seeing. Uh, and the main issue I had was kind of game piece handling. So there's a couple places where like. The, um, the geometry didn't like totally seem like it would work out quite as well, uh, like with the actual puck, um, just stuff like the puck not fitting or it wouldn't line up quite right. But uh, overall, I kind of liked the way they did the intake here, having like the wheels grabbing the puck first and then the mechanisms like centering behind that or the vectored intake wheels. Uh, kind of a neat lower position shooter mechanism, but just a lot of detail missing they had generally, that was my issue. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if there was just a little bit more detail, I think this robot would have done really well. It looks pretty good, um, as far as I can tell. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to our next team, which is Team 499. Yeah, Team 499, team name Yeet, uh, ranked 54, and was also another sole member of Team 5212, uh, and their name was Aryan. Uh, this robot was pretty simple, uh, six-wheel drive, West Coast drive, but I thought that their catching mechanism was a little small. I didn't think it had a very good chance of actually catching anything. So they got some points off for that. It also looks really hard to manufacture. Um, it's like all one part, so it was a little weird to see. And I also don't think they can intake from the ground. I think they just catch and shoot. So a lot of difficult things to do in a match um, is what this robot was going for. And I think they would have had some hard time trying to execute their strategy that they went for. Yeah, based upon the team name, they were hoping that partners could yeet the puck to them, and yeah. they'll go from there. All right, uh, Cawthorn, why don't you tell us a little bit about Team 430? Yeah, Team 430, uh, Team Redacted. Um, they were, again, a lot of these are running, the teams around here are running through with the same theme, like these small, agile, um, I saw lots of pass-throughs and lots of robots, and this is a really good example. So uh, this had a a pretty cool pass through on the underside of the robot where it didn't really like it didn't have to go inside the robot it just kind of got shot underneath it and that was cool um let's see they had they had an intake they had a, what, a beaver tail intake um it was missing quite a bit of detail it wasn't great but um they also had these t these guys had a really detailed bumper assembly like they've got staples in there they've got pool noodles inside the bumpers they've got the wood like they've got a really detailed bumper assembly Make sure, make sure you get the intake worked out, intake worked out as well as the bumpers next time, guys. But this is a really good effort from Team Redacted. They came in rank 60. Yeah, I mean everyone knows that the first uh, measure in scouting is bumper, um, how the bumper. That is work. true. That so is true. And if you've got your bumper staples in the CAD model, I mean, stocks are going up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to Team 351. Troy, what did they have going on there? Muted. Again. <laughs> I, had, I thought it was unmuted and I double clicked. Okay. Arm Gang Gang, FRC uh, 1403, Catathon 351 in rank 40. So this robot was like kind of weird to me because when I first saw it, I was like, is this a 2013 robot? Uh, that's just kind of the overall vibe I was getting from it. But uh, it's pretty interesting to see like kind of how they did the flipper intake assembly. But I had like kind of some issues with it geometrically. Uh, the way it kind of protruded slightly outside the bumpers seems like you'd have to be dead nuts onto the puck to be able to actually get that right. And it just seemed like it was longer than it needed to be. Like the whole robot, I feel like you could have like you could have shrunk it, and it still would have been fine. Um, but yeah. 
Yeah, with the rules that you can't leave a zone with the puck, you'd think you'd want a little bit shorter of a robot. Um, that way you have more room to maneuver inside the zone before you get rid of the puck. But yeah. to each their own, I guess. All right, uh, let's move on to Team 502. Yep, Team 502, team name Inam, was in rank 70. A little low there, but uh, they're also a single-member team from FRC 3324, and his name was Manny. Uh, this robot's extremely simple. You can see it's just a kit bot with uh, with some sort of box as their intake. I thought it was a little interesting, but um, not too much to say. Their intake is literally one part, and it's not really manufacturable, and there's no wheels until it's already inside of the intake. So um, I thought it'd be a little bit difficult to score on this one. My notes actually say if you get one intake in a, in a match, I'll be rooting for you. But other than that, I think their electronics were well done, and they got some wires in there, so I'm happy. Yeah, maybe this uh, he's or the person uh, is their drivetrain uh, CAD member, so maybe he was just practiced him or they uh, were just practicing that. But let's move on to our next team, uh, which is team number 429. Yeah, it's 429, the Badger Bots. They had one of the more creative submissions that I definitely judged. Um, they had kind of a central post that where they guided the pucks towards and then uh, brought the pucks up the post and then shot them out. It was really cool. Um, they whew, they had some their, their, they had some interesting stuff with their turrets. They had lots and lots and lots of bevel gears. They had a lot of bevel gears. Oh my goodness. Um, all throughout this robot. And they did some interesting things. Like their turret was uh, like a chain driven, but the chain was the turret. It's the... Um, turret itself they've got some interesting stuff going on very creative ideas some things that wouldn't really ever work in real life but hey it was cool um new ideas you know and it was a creative endeavor so uh badger bots ended up at rank 29 so congrats i love bevel gears as much as the next person but there might be too many bevel gears yeah they were definitely in the teens maybe like yeah they had a lot. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what uh, Team 486 has going on. Sure. So we got Team 486 here. They ended up ranked number 26, name uh, Meow, and they're from FRC 4561. So this robot, like when I first opened it up, I was like pulling it up in SolidWorks, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, this is kind of a chonky robot. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of places where you've just got like a ton of fasteners and a ton of plates all together. And they've got this intake system that has like, I think it, I figured out it was like three or four degrees of freedom, depending on how you want to count it. There's just like, it picks up the puck and then it kind of flips it into their hopper, which is also used for catching things. And then they have like a kicker stowed underneath it. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with the intake. But once you get to the shooter, I was kind of unimpressed. They've said they had these like cams that would kind of adjust the angle the puck would come out, like uh, 118, 2013, but those weren't powered. And there were some other things that were just kind of lacking detail once you got past the intake. Hmm. All right, that's a good looking intake. So props to them for that. Um, but yeah. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and move on to Team 507. Brian, what did you think of them? Yep, Team 507 Raptors ranked 27. Another single member team. His name was Sue Raj. Um, this robot, again, really simple, just a quick intake on the front. The drivetrain is missing some components, but looks like it would work. And then it's got this cool double jointed arm. It also has a extendable part on it, kind of like pink arm from 2011 that I really liked. Um, everything was pretty simple except for the arm. I think they focused on that. It had adjustable mechanism. It had a spot to connect the chain. The chain was catted. Um, just a lot of detail in that. The, the actual bearing setup was pretty good, and I thought it would actually work pretty well in real life, so I was impressed with that. I guess just a point of reference for that team is just remember to put encoders on your mechanism and have something for the programming team to work with, because I think it would be kind of hard to control if you didn't do that. Yeah, so overall, I thought they did well. Yeah, a lot of teams were missing encoders. That was that yep. Just using Falcons on everything does not count as using encoders <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, good looking robot. Just a little bit, a little bit more needed. Um, but let's move on to our next team, which is Team Four Fifty Seven. Yeah, it's Team Four Fifty Seven called Lettuce Gang. 
I, I don't know what the story is behind that, but they had a very green robot, so it works. Um, this is another small, agile, they have a good swerve drive, uh, a caught swerve. Uh, they integrated it well into their chassis. They've got like a very simple funnel, a uh, passive funnel that would grab the, you know, guide the pucks in. Um, good effort. I have a feeling that it would never really quite work. I think it needs something to get the pucks into the ramp. Um, so they suffered some points there, but after that, they've got uh, some compliant wheels that can intake the puck and spit it out the other side. Um, so this is definitely like a, a a low profile, a cycler is probably be playing some defense when you need them to. Um, they've got their electronics all laid out on the top board. Um, and they have a good battery box, which is appreciated. Um, so this is a pretty good effort overall from uh, Lettuce Gang. I think these are some new catters. Um, so they end up at rank 59. I can uh, I can appreciate how they changed the Talon FX part of the Falcons to green to match with their theme. That is that is nice. That is a very nice detail. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on from this very green robot and go to Team 481. All right. So we've got 481 here. Ended up rank 42 in the Catathon. Uh, all of my teams are in the ranks in the 40s. But uh, they are the dream team, two members from FRC 3128. Uh, this robot was kind of interesting to just, as I started poking around, I started noticing more things about it. So like on the underside kind of, they have this intake system with diagonal wheels that kind of like shoot the puck almost up into the robot using some pretty complicated sheet metal. I don't think they could actually manufacture it like at all, but it was kind of neat how they were just imagining that. Um, my main issue with this robot was in their scouting dock, they were geared at 28 feet per second, which is, uh, even in SoCal, that's um, it's kind of scary. Like, you got six Falcons, but yeah, you, you'll all, you're going to be all over the place. <laughs> yeah, uh, generally not a lot of detail past the elevator. I think that was, like, my issue besides that. Yeah, if you're going to go uh, 28 feet per second, you might as well just direct drive... Uh and throw 10-sided wheels on there as well while you're at it. Um, oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on to Team 491, uh, which probably has my favorite team name. Brian, what would you think of them? Yep, their team name is You're a Disappointment, and they're ranked 33 <laughs> uh, from Team 2046 as well, three members from there. Um, overall, I thought the robot was actually pretty well done. They had all their gussets in, and all of that seemed to check out correctly it was another dual jointed arm with a pink uh arm style thing going on one thing i really liked about their pink arm is they used the versa whatever it's called female adapter on the inside which allowed them to convert their i guess rotational power in like a cool way that i, I gave them a lot of points for i thought it was pretty cool their bearing setup was good um i feared for their intaking abilities it was I mean, you're going to have to be really good at driving or get a limelight to make that work, to be honest. But other than that, the drivetrain was good. The gussets looked good. And uh, I gave them some points for having a well-laid-out belly pan. Yeah, they could definitely use some help from a limelight or an Oscar eye um, for picking up those game pieces. Um, but all right, uh, good to see from Team 491. Let's go ahead and move on down to Team 439. Yeah, Team 439 is Columbus Space Program uh, from FRC Team 4188 of uh, the same name. So I think this was uh, this is a new team. I think these are some new catters. This was a very ambitious robot setting out. This has got an intake. This has got swerve. This has got a turret shooter. So this is a very ambitious, and they did get all of the parts of the robot into the model. So they did a very good job with that. Um, I'll say lots of the things in here they, they suffered because lots of the things on the robot really wouldn't work uh their intake probably wouldn't be able to actually bring pucks into the robot their turret shooter isn't really feasible the way it's laid out but they're all really good concepts and i think once these members kind of learn sort of how you construct these mechanisms and how you put these together i think they could end up with some really really good skills and a pretty impressive robot all in all so uh columbus space program ended up at rank 67 yeah i mean if this if this is a group of new catters it's pretty impressive what they got done and this is a pretty good experience for them uh, yeah and it should definitely help them uh more in build season uh which is yeah. coming up fast um well, and all right one of 
I'll just jump in. One of the, I'm loving the fact that uh, we're seeing lots of teams. Uh, certain teams are like having lots of people compete in the catathon and getting their new catters and new designers to learn this way. So we're seeing uh, like 33, 24 sent a lot of people and made a lot of teams in this catathon. And I really enjoy seeing that. I think that's great. Yeah, really good experience to prepare for the upcoming season. All right, uh, Troy, what did you think of our next team, which is team number 464? Okay, so uh, they placed 34th in the catathon team name RUR from FRC 5996. Uh, this robot, as they point out in their scouting doc, when you look at it, it kind of looks like a shopping basket from the side. It's real flat, and then they've got this kind of U-shaped piece for the limelight. Uh, there was kind of a lot of detail in this. I wasn't expecting it that much when I first saw it. But then I started looking closer at the detail, and I had a few issues. So, like, uh, those clamping uh, bearing blocks that Vex sells, like, they had those, but they put the screws and then put a nut on the other side, which, like, those are threaded, so you don't need to do that. And the nut ends up interfering with the chain. So, like, there were some things that seemed like these were people who hadn't necessarily worked with these components before or were kind of, like, exploring new options in the catathon. So, like, maybe they want to try that out in season and test it in CAD first. Uh, there was... Something else, yeah, I had kind of the very top and bottom range of dry train schemes. They were at five feet per second. So, <laughs> I mean, I the, the, you could probably make that work. But in some places like SoCal, that's you're going to be behind the curve. Yeah. Uh, zooming all over the place. Uh, speaking of zooming, let's, uh, let's head on to our next team, uh, which is team 523. Yep, Team 523, Robo Manglers, ranked 36, and it comprises of people from FRC 1374 and 5724. I thought this robot was pretty interesting. They had like a disc golf thing going on, which was pretty creative. Uh, I didn't see another team do that kind of chain link thing to stop the disc, so it was pretty cool. But it didn't go to anywhere. They're, if you look at their bucket, it just kind of doesn't go anywhere. So I thought they would have a little bit of trouble getting their disc out of there um other than that they don't seem to have a ground intake so uh points off for that and they have like three layers of multiple tubing rollers going on which is pretty convoluted complicated to assemble and difficult to just do overall well and their shooter on the back seems pretty simple but i thought that actually could work pretty well other than a couple parts clipping on the left and right side that shouldn't be there yeah it seems uh robo manglers and team yeet can work together getting it down the field just passing it back and forth to each other um so that, that would be cool to see but uh let's see what our next team has going on and our next team is team 428 coffin what did you think of them yeah bad team cad team i liked the name um, this was overall a really great submission this was very detailed uh i do like the shield they've got this like acrylic frosted acrylic polycarb shield over the robot i like that with the the pretty heavy pucks flying around i think that's a good a good effort this is also this is a really good use of cots parts this is using uh the swerve and steer cot swerve cot swerve uh versa blocks from vex lots of wheels just like a v overall really good use of cots parts um good concept they've got a ground intake from one side kind of ferries it up to the robot to a shooter pretty classic pretty standard but overall just a very well executed, well detailed, uh, good concept of a robot. And so bad team, CAD team ended up at rank 37. Yeah, it's uh, it's really cool to see teams using all these COTS products, um, you know, it, to somewhat more simulate what their team will actually be building in season. I don't know the resources of this team, um, but I suspect if you're CADing with all these COTS parts, you're using these COTS parts. Um, so good practice leading up to um, build season, what their team's actually going to be doing. Absolutely. All right. Let's, uh, let's go on to team 459. All right. So we've got a team named Lucky Duck here with two members from 5814 and 5815. Kind of interesting sequential numbers there. But uh, my main issues with this robot, which is kind of lacking a lot of detail and perhaps some oversights, or maybe that's just like missing parts. So their whole frame is this big C shape with no real cross members. And then they have this intake, which is, I think it's supposed to be able to drop under the robot, an intake from four sides. So they have a swerve drive to utilize that. But uh, the main thing I was kind of looking at is you're using like 15 PDP slots for only four degrees of freedom I could count. 
uh, kind of convoluted intake and shooting mechanism. The geometry just didn't seem like it was there. And just generally a lot of missing detail. Hmm. Uh, yeah, interesting concept with the two Cs and nothing really connecting it. Um, I'd be really interested to see how that worked out. Um, but let's move on to our last team before we draw our first giveaway, and that is Team 510. Team 510, team name Why So Serious, uh, ranked 56 with a sole team member also named Sam. Uh, this team was using on shape, and I suspect that if they used SolidWorks, they would have had a little bit more detail, you know what I mean? But uh, anyways. Wow. <laughs> wow. This is the first team that had a vectored intake that I really liked. It was over the bumper, and it was cool to see it kind of have that little swooshy shape. That I like to call it. It was really cool. Uh, um, and I like that they packaged their shooter kind of like, if you look at this, um, I guess, starting uh, configuration, their shooter kind of goes up with their intake and it's pretty interesting. So this robot's really simple, but I think they hit a lot of the hard concepts, like the vectored intake and that kind of stuff. And I think that it would actually perform pretty well as a passing slash supporting robot, which is what I scored them for. So they did pretty well. I kind of have some interjections about the thrifty bot mechanisms, me yeah, mechanisms everyone's using everywhere for their mechanum intake system. But uh, so those have nylon rollers, and this is a Delrin puck. So I don't think those are going to be able to actually vector the game piece very well at all. Uh, I saw a lot of teams using them, and it didn't didn't seem appropriate for this game object. Hey, as long as they put their vectored intake wheels on the correct direction, I'm fine with it. I had, I think, three different submissions that put their mechanisms on the wrong way. <laughs> Get that right. They're trying to center it for when they eject it out. Yeah, yeah. Trying, trying to confuse, yeah. trying to confuse the the opposing alliance. So they never know which direction it's going to go. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.